When I was growing up, I spent a lot of time in the garage with my dad. He was a woodworker, loved making things, created furniture and toys. He'd craft replacement parts for all kinds of things, from vehicles to tools out of wood. He once made a set of wooden key cupboards with glass doors that, uh, that we kept one, and then one went to each set of grandparents. While he was busy with that, I was mostly spending my time playing made-up games in the corner or playing with chunks of scrap wood with, or with tools that I couldn't break. I was an extra set of hands from time to time to hold something steady when he needed to glue or cut or uh, when, I need, when he needed somebody to catch something from the table saw. I'd like to say that I learned to work wood from him, but I really didn't. Most of what I know I got from shop class. Like, and that's because I wasn't out there because I was interested in learning. And he didn't allow me out there, suffering my frequent distractions because I was such an invaluable helper. I was there because I loved him. And he let me be out there because he loved me. I was there because we were there together. But because we were out there together, because of that love that kept me there, even when I was more of a hindrance than a help, something happened. His love formed me. It made me who I am. I may not have learned much about woodworking, but I did learn what the different tools were and how to use them safely. I learned that many of the things we buy can be easily made, and I learned that I have the ability to make them. I learned to see things in their constituent parts and to imagine how those parts fit together. Now, there are a lot of ways that the love of my parents formed me, but this is the example that comes to mind for me this week as I've been busy in my own garage, repairing and maintaining beehives in preparation for the arrival of more honeybees this month. Hives that I use some of his tools to help make. Those hives are reminders that part of him is in me still, because a part of me is him. I think about that tonight as we read St. John's story. Jesus asks, do you understand what I've done to you? Of course they don't. Of course we don't. I didn't understand what dad was doing to me by letting me hang out in the garage with him. I'm starting to now, but I suspect I still don't. Not really. I suspect that when the baby comes, those evenings that I spent in the garage with my dad will take on an entirely new meaning. And that's why calling what Jesus gives his disciples tonight a commandment is a little misleading. The Hebrew word is Torah the same name by which the scriptures are called. It means commandment or law, yes, but it can also mean teaching or wisdom or guidance or even advice. The commandment he gives is to love one another as they have been loved. But the real Torah is what he does before that. Before the Passover, that commemoration of God's deliverance of Israel from Egypt, Jesus sat down to eat with his friends. He knew that the time had come for him to depart. He knew that one of them would betray him. But he also knew where he'd come from and where he was going. He knew who he was. He knew who he was in God. And he knew that in light of all that was about to happen, the choice of what he could do that night was up to him. Knowing all of this, the choice that he made was to get up, strip down to his underwear, and wash his disciples' feet. An act so embarrassing and lavish that Peter is not only embarrassed for his teacher, but ashamed to have this thing done for himself. And Jesus chooses to do this thing not just for Peter, 
not just for James and John, not just for Thaddeus or Bartholomew or Nathaniel or Levi, but also for Judas, the one he knew he would betray him. And he chooses to do this thing because he truly loves them all, even Judas, so damn much. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. I wonder what that means. The end of what? The end of his life? The end of his ability? The end of everything? Maybe even to the end of love? He loves them because that's who he is. And he knows it. On this night, as Jesus prepares to share this meal with his friends and remember with them all that God has done for their ancestors, Jesus knows that love is who he is because it is who and what God is. And that and everything that God has made. The love he demonstrates tonight and in the days to come is the same love in which and from which God formed light and dry land and the plants of the field and the birds of the air and the creatures of the sea. It's the same love that God breathed into the nostrils of that mud figure in the garden. Jesus knows that this love is where he has come from, and he knows it's where he's returning, and it is in that knowledge that he surrenders himself to that love, giving himself entirely to his disciples, even to Judas, and to us, and to the world that cries for his blood. By pouring himself out like this for his friends, he is forming them in that love. He's doing for them what my dad did for me in that garage. He's shaping who they will become and where their lives will go after this. He's creating the people that they will be. And that's what God's love does. It creates. When he commands his disciples to love as they've been loved, he's inviting them to practice that love, to find out who they really are, that a part of them, a part of him, lives in them, because a part of them is him. He invites them to find him abiding in them just as he abides in the Father and the Father abides in him. And to know that this abiding, this love, is what creates all things. That this love is who they really are because it's who they are in God. He's inviting them to experience and to bear witness to the commandment, the Torah, the guiding principle of creation, the fundamental law of physics. Now, of course, our love is not as perfect as Jesus, is it? Most of the time, we are not capable of loving as we've been loved because we are too limited, too broken, too hurt. We aren't able to give ourselves to one another totally and to receive each other totally in return. Mostly, our love is a pitiful imitation, a broken replica, a faint echo of the love in which we've been formed. Next to the love of God, our attempts at love are like a childish crayon drawing on a napkin hanging next to Renaissance frescoes and French Impressionist paintings. Our attempts are the hot cross buns screechily played on a plastic recorder when compared to Beethoven's Fifth, Fifth Symphony or Bach's Moonlight Sonata. They're the crooked two-by-four into which a little boy has haphazardly pounded a handful of nails 
that's sitting on top of this handsome oak cabinet crafted by his father. And that is their beauty. Our love, as imperfect and limited as it is, bears witness to the love in which it has its source. Our love, even when it falls short, even when it does harm, even when it kills, speaks of the love from which we have been formed. Jesus invites us to surrender to this love, to pour ourselves out into it over and over again, so that in losing ourselves we may find who we truly are in God, who we truly are in love that we may find Christ abiding in us and us in him, all of us united in the one in whom we have come, from whom we have come and to whom we are returning. Knowing this, knowing where we have come from and where we are going, knowing that the Father has given all things into our hands, what choices will we make? How might this love be changing us? What has this love done to us that we cannot yet even begin to understand? This week, in light of this Torah, we ponder this love together. Love that speaks light into being and breathes life into dust. Love that conquers armies, in part sees, love that washes the feet of friends and betrayers alike, love that gives itself for our food and drink, love that forgives all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love that pours itself out, taking the form of a slave humbling itself to the point of death, even death on a cross. Love that dies so that we might live, and lives so that we might die.